you all for watching. Um, about me, I am a science diver. I have been certified since I was 10, uh, and I became a science diver through AAUS at age 12. Um, we have traveled all over the world, not all over the world, I'm sorry, we've traveled to the Caribbean, uh, we've traveled to Aruba and Bonaire, um, all doing coral research. Um, so we also have a boat that we use uh, locally, so that is me driving our boat, uh, and then this is just some other images of me doing science divery things. Uh, so the organization history. Um, Dr. Janelle, who is the founder of Marowak Lanier's, began training others to be science divers through UNC. That was in 2008. Um, Marowak was founded in 2016 because Dr. Janelle had a passion for teaching others how to be science divers, how to protect the environment, and specifically how to protect our corals and their delicate ocean environments. So that's why Marowak was founded. Um, let's see, in February, we worked with the Coral Restoration Foundation to learn about coral maintenance. Uh, there we learned about coral restoration, we learned about coral management techniques, we learned how to found coral nurseries, and also how to outplant corals once they had grown to um, acceptable sizes. We learned all of those things uh, with the staghorn coral, um, which is Acrocora cervicornis, uh, which is local to Florida and many other parts of the Caribbean. Um, in May of that same year, 2018, um, Mero led the main master course, also through UNC, where uh, Dr. Janelle taught many grad students how to manage corals and work with our own local coral, which is Oculina arbustula. Um, in 2019, Mero founded the first North Carolina chapter of Scuba Knots. Um, Scuba Knots is a Florida-based youth science diving organization, and we were very privileged to be able to implement the first chapter in North Carolina. Um, in 2020, the Scuba Knots took over some of the coral nurseries that the grad students had set up during the main master, um, and we continued working with those and implementing new trees into our nursery. Uh, in 2021, um, Marrow Foundation, unfortunately, had to separate from Scuba Knots, and we formed our own youth organization uh, called the Marrow Aquaneers. Uh, so since 2021, the Marrow Aquaneers have been continuing to work with um, coral nurseries and coral restoration, primarily at Radio Island Rock Jetty, which is our local science diving location. Uh, so Marrow Foundation is a youth science diving organization uh, we provide AAUS science diving training. We are an AAUS affiliate. Uh, we also work with Dan on occasion. Um, so the picture in the top left is two of our science divers uh, doing Dan ESA Pro training. Uh, the picture in the top right is rescue science diving training. So that is, I believe, rescue lists to get someone out of the water after you have dragged them to shore. Um, the bottom left picture is a swim test that we do every year, which is um, 400, 400 yards free swim, uh, a five minute treading water, and then a 25 underwater. We also have much of our own gear, so we are not dependent on any local dive, or dive shops or dive organizations, and we keep that all in a trailer so that it is easily transportable. <laughs> um, let's see, a lot of the coral restoration work that we have done so the first steps in this work was, as I said, in the 2018 May Master. So these are some of the wonderful ladies that we had during that time. They um, worked to create two coral tables and two coral trees with the aim of seeing which did better in North Carolina waters, as our waters are substantially more, um, more turbid, turbid and uh, less visibility than many waters in North Carolina and Florida. Uh, so they chose two locations, uh, and at each location they put down one table and one tree. Uh, the yellow star is location green day marker 3B, which is at the end of the rock jetty which runs down uh, Radio Island. And the pink star is the second location, which is the west side of Radio Island, which is a short hike over the beach and across the island to get to this small bay, which is protected by, in part by a seawall. Um, these were the original schematics for that coral tree. 
which we have not strayed too much from when we implemented separate coral trees. Uh, it's 0.75 meters tall and it has four different branches, each with four coral trees, or sorry, corals attached. It is 1.5 meters tall, although that does vary given that we do not use exact measurements when measuring the line that runs from the screw anchor to the buoy at the top. Oh, one change that we did make is that uh, instead of using a 22.7 kilogram weight, we have switched to using screw anchors because we've found that they hold up better in the current that we have at radio versus the weights. This was their table plan. It had a weight in the middle and as well as on the legs of the table. And the coral was tied to a um, grid or a plastic set of sheeting that hung from the four legs of the table. <clears throat> Um, this table we've found is actually not as good for coral growth, mostly because uh, we get too much uh, secre concretion on things that we put underwater, and so this mostly attracts barnacles and the corals do not get a chance to grow or see any sunlight because they're choked out by growth on top of the table. <coughs> so in 2018, we joined with the scuba knots. Um, this is pic these are pictures of some of the things that we did with the scuba knots. You can see in the top left, that was a beach cleanup that we did. Uh, in the top right and the bottom left, those are pictures of the trees and tables that we continued working with. Um, Hurricane Florence in 2018 unfortunately destroyed most of the tables and trees that were originally put down uh, by the Maymaster. And so that's in the summer of 2019, we put down two more trees and two more tables to continue monitoring and coming to a decision as to which was more efficient in coral growth. You can see in the bottom left picture that we also briefly worked with um, a version of tables that we could be attached to trees. So this was a small platform um, which had uh, plastic gridding on it that we could attach corals to that were attached to plugs and we thought that this might be a better way to uh, outplant corals. Unfortunately these tables um, often would get yanked off of the trees by current or um, fishermen. We have a lot of fishermen at radio and so this turned out to be not particularly efficient especially since sometimes corals or uh, other uh, ocean life would grow onto the table and then would choke out the coral's growth. Um, on the bottom right is a picture of the outplanting method that we finally decided to use. Um, it is cinder blocks with um, nails in it that we would zip tie the corals to. Uh, this has had moderate success so far. Uh, we have two corals which are growing very well, um, but we have lost a few of the outplanting sites to sand drifts, so we are still working on coming up with a better way to outplant our corals in radio. Uh, so increased training and experimentation. Um, on the left is a picture of me with the coral trees that we are currently working with today. Um, it has a buoy at the top and it's connected to a screw anchor at the bottom. Those screw anchors are around three feet long and two and a half feet of those screw anchor will be buried in the sand. Uh, this means that it is much more secure and less likely to float away, which is a definite concern because we have very high current at radio. Um, I'm currently working on a project to determine which coral size is the best and gives the best chance of life after um, being attached to a tree. Uh, we've noticed in the past that when we use very small fragments of corals, they often die or get blown away. And so we're trying to determine whether or not there is an optimal size for putting onto the tree and later outplanting. Uh, so here are some of the wider benefits of localized training. So our divers are trained in North Carolina using very small scale training methods. We only have about four or five coral trees, which <coughs> adds up to about 20 or 30 corals that we are currently maintaining. Um, however, we've been 
lucky to work with um, places such as Reef Renewal Bonaire and the Coral Restoration Foundation in much larger scale nurseries. And so we can apply the skills that we've learned in small scale areas and training grounds to much larger coral restoration efforts. Um, this means that we can have pre-trained volunteers come into um, volunteer organizations that are much larger and they don't require training. You can just tell them clean this tree, this tree, this tree, or we're out planting these corals today, go do it. And that means you don't have to spend as much time training volunteers. We also have earned our coral nursery restoration specialist um, certifications, which also helps with that. Um, so like I said, we've been lucky enough to work with many organizations in the Caribbean. Uh, we've worked with Coral Restoration Foundation. We've been able to work with Moat Marine Laboratory. That was mostly when we were still affiliated with Scuba Knots. Um, just recently in this March, we worked with Stinapa and Reef Renewal Bonaire when we traveled to Bonaire. And we've also worked with Scubble Bubbles, which is a youth science diving organization based in Aruba. Um, so Kate Gould, Christina Flanagan, Maite, and Madeline. These are all graduate students who have gone on to earn their graduate degrees or PhDs in a coral related field. Uh, Christina Flanagan, I believe, is working with charismatic megafauna and sharks. Um, we've also worked with BA people. Um, <coughs> very sorry. We've also been able to work with BA people. Uh, we currently have a group, Sally and Daniel, who are working on artificial reefs and studying how corals are uh, attracted to and aggregate to those artificial reefs and what combination and shape is most attractive to life. Uh, so in addition to this, we have all of our science divers um, who are youth science divers and have been able to work with many major coral restoration organizations. Um, thank you very much for listening to my talk. Um, I would ask if you have any questions, but since this is recorded, I can't. Um, if you'd like to email me, you can. Uh, my email address is bryn, B-R-Y-N, dot V-L, dot Fleming, F-L-E-M-I-N-G, at narrowfoundation.org. Again, if you have any questions, my email address is bryn, B-R-Y-N, dot V-L, dot Fleming, F-L-E-M-I-N-G, at narrowfoundation.org. Thank you very much. Thirteen minutes, forty-five minutes.